All right, today we have an all-in-one solar charge inverter. Let's open it up. All right, and there's the unit. So this is an all-in-one 48 volt, 3500 watt inverter from Calpha. And they've already sent us their battery and we did a review on that. So make sure you check out that video. But now we have their inverter. Let's take a look at the specs. So as we can see, our AC output is 3,500 watt. Our rated current on AC is 29 amps. The battery input is 48 volts with a range of 40 to 60 volts DC. The maximum AC bypass current is 40 amps. And it also has a AC charger at 40 amps. So it can charge your battery from the AC at 40 amps. Our PV input, max power is 4,400 watts. Our max open voltage is 145 volts DC. Our MPPT range is 60 to 115 volts DC. So you need at least 60 volts from your solar for this to work properly. On the PV out, our max charge current is 80 amps. So it's basically an 80 amp MPPT controller. All right, and on the bottom of the unit is where we have all our ports for connectivity. We got our AC input, our AC output. We got our RS-485 ports for battery communications. We have a relay port. We have our parallel connection port. So you can parallel multiple units together to increase your output. And I also think you can do split phase. So it does come with the cables to parallel the units together. We have the connection for our battery here and then we have our PV. Also on this side, we have an input circuit breaker. Looks like we have air filters on both sides. And we have two fans here at the bottom. We can open up this bottom panel to expose the area where we connect everything. So we've got our AC input, AC output. Way down in there, we have our battery connections. And then this is our PV input. The battery connections are buried way down in there, so. But it really looks like it's not too difficult because it goes right in through the bottom and it lands exactly where it needs to be. And since we have this bottom panel off, let's go ahead and open it all the way up and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, I think I've got all the screws removed. Let's see if we can open it up. Oh, there we go. All right, let's take a look. Everything looks clean and tidy on the inside. Here's the back of the screen. And then it has a ribbon cable that connects to this board right here, which is probably the main control board. We've got a number of relays and switches inductors, capacitors. I like how the airflow is laid out here. Let's see. It looks like, hmm, looks like the fans suck air in here through these filters. And then it runs across these heat sinks and then out the bottom. There's a filter on this side too. Same thing here. So the fans are positioned right below these large heat sinks. It's always seemed weird to me that you would take heat and pull it down <laughs> through the bottom of something. But I guess if you've got fans, you can force it. You're kind of working against convection at that point, but I'm sure there's a reason. I guess I don't particularly like seeing wires like this resting on the edge of a heat sink like that. that. I mean, this is kind of sharp right here. I would have rather seen something protecting that wire a little bit better or it moved off there. All right, guys, so I got her put back together and I've got it set up so we can test it. So I've got it attached to this board right here. I've got the AC output connected with this 10 gauge SO cord. 
I think they actually recommend a larger gauge, but this is gonna be fine for testing purposes. And I've got it run into these breakers and then to this, these outlets. So I've got two outlets. Uh, one side is on one breaker, the other side is on the other breaker. I've got it connected to their Kalfa battery. Now I did run into some difficulty with the communication cable. That's because it turns out that these pins on the battery and the ones on the inverter are not the same. So you can't just use a straight through cable, which is what I was initially using. It wouldn't communicate. So looking in the manual for the battery, it shows the pin out. And then looking in the manual for the inverter, it shows its pin out. So you've got to build the cable to match up the pins and they're in different spots, but it is in the manual. They also do sell the cable. So yeah, after I got the wire built properly, it still wasn't communicating. <laughs> so you have to go into the inverter and I think the inverter is set to do pylon protocol and this one speaks pace. So I changed it to pace and then it did start communicating. The other thing to note is there's two RS-485 ports down here. There's a one and a two. You have to hook the battery up to the port two. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot the, the other thing that I had to do to get the communications to work. These uh, switches, I had to turn them all off except for one to make it ID one. So yeah, a lot to figure out to get the communications going, but if you basically follow what I just said, it should work. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the battery on. And the inverter should be coming on here soon. Okay, so we see the inverter on. We should see this light come on, which is the AC inverter output light. There we go. So we should have AC voltage out now. There we go, 120 volts out. Okay, so while we're just sitting here idling, let's check the idle power consumption. Okay, so we're showing 0.82 amps, 827 at, let's see, we're at 52.9 volts. So we're idling at 43.74 watts. Now this does have an eco mode and I do have it set. So I think after some period of time, if it doesn't detect a load greater than some amount of wattage, it turns the output off. Now I don't know if it turns it back on. I don't know how that works, but it's supposed to go into some low power mode, but we'll check that later. So right now what I want to do is I just want to plug some stuff in and see if we can push this thing. So let's plug in the heater. Oh, that was interesting. It actually had just went into low power mode. And so when I plugged the heater in, it wasn't on immediately. And I just, and I waited for a second looking at it and it came on. It went back up to 120 volts. So I guess it was kind of, in like a search mode, that's interesting. Okay, so we got the heater on max. Let's take a look at how much power we're pulling out of the battery. Twenty-nine, almost thirty amps. Yeah, twenty-nine point nine, so basically thirty amps. So let's plug something else in on this side since this is a different circuit. All right, so I've got two heaters going on high right now. Now the fans are really ramped up in this thing. Yeah, it's showing here on the AC output load, we're doing 24.3 amps, and we're doing 2.91 kilowatts. So almost three kilowatts. And the fans aren't like super loud. It's not terrible, really. 
Okay, so while that's running, let's plug in some solar. I'm showing like 60 amps on the battery here. Uh, I think that should go down once the solar starts kicking in. Okay, it's definitely saying charging on the solar. Yep, there we go. Now we're down to 54.9 amps from the battery. So the solar is helping a little bit. There's not a whole lot of sun out. It's very overcast. And I'm only hooked up to these two panels here. So these are really just 435 watts each. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna let this thing run and uh, see how well it does. All right guys, so this thing has been running perfectly fine for like the last 15, 20 minutes with both of these heaters cranking, doing about three kilowatts. So no problem so far. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna disconnect these loads and allow it to go into that eco mode where it's not detecting anything drawing power. And I wanna see what the idle current is after it goes in that mode. So I'm gonna just let it sit here for a while until we see the 120 volts go down to, I guess, zero. I think that's what I saw earlier. And I'll be back. All right, so I just saw the output go down. It looks, it's showing like two volts or something like that. I think it probably took, I don't know, a few minutes, maybe two, three minutes for it to do that. Okay, so now we are idling at 0.52 amps. So let's do the math there. With the low power mode, we're idling at 27.352 watts. I'm sure there's some downside to the low power mode. There may be some really low power devices that might not appear to be drawing enough power and this thing will shut down and maybe those devices will stop running okay so yeah looking through the manual on the power saving mode it says if the load is less than 50 watts the inverter output is turned off after a delay and then when the load is more than 50 watts the inverter uh, turns back on so yeah you have to have you have to have at least a 50 watt load going to keep the inverter from shutting down when you're using the power saving mode. So what I want to do right now is it's in that power saving mode because there's nothing plugged in. I want to plug in this heat gun and I've already got it set on high. I want to see how long it takes for it to turn the inverter back on. So let's plug it in. Oh, there we go. So it seemed like it was about maybe 10 seconds. All right, so I think that's going to be it for the video. Let me know what you guys think about this inverter. I'll leave links in the description to everything I've used here, and I'll catch you on the next one.